welcome to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. Now firstly I just want to say a massive shout out and thank you to a friend of mine, Tarantula Dan, uh, for sharing the last video, the uh, video on the vinegar rooms. That's much appreciated dude, uh, thanks a lot for that. And welcome to all the new subscribers as a part of Dan sharing that video. Thanks for joining me on this. Now <laughs> uh, this one we're going to have a look at another type of invertebrate. And have a look at a species of isopod, and in particular the zebra isopod. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we have the zebra isopod, or Armadillidium maculatum. And what is an isopod? Well, it's another name for woodlice or a woodlouse. So that's what these guys are. Of course, they go by various other sort of common and regional names. So what are isopods? Well, isopods are crustaceans. Now, crustaceans include things like crabs and lobsters. But these guys, the woodlice isopods, as you can see, live on land. So these guys are terrestrial, but you still get aquatic isopods as well. Now hopefully you can see why these guys get their common name of zebra isopod. With that black coloration with the white sort of banding on them, which can be fairly variable amongst individuals. And see here the uh, the little baby ones here, the juveniles, have very distinct white banding on them. As you get older, it sometimes breaks up. So here we have my setup for my maculatums. As you can see here, it's just fairly simple. This is a glass tank with uh, some soil substrate in there, along with some decaying leaves, rotten wood. There's a chunk of carrot in there as just a supplementary feed for them. A couple of bits of cork bark for them to cling on to and escape the soil if need be. The so maculatum don't like it overly humid, so, but I like to keep one area a bit more humid. They still need the moisture, otherwise they can't actually breathe. Being crustaceans, they have very modified lungs uh, to be able to breathe out on land, but they still need some moisture around for them. And diet for these guys is primarily decaying organic matter. They are what we call detritivores, and that's what that word means. So being detritivores, they eat pretty much things on the ground, like so dead leaves that they've got here, as well as rotten wood. In the captivity, we can also give them what are called shiitake blocks, uh, which are often used for beetles and stuff. These guys absolutely love those as well. And as long as they've got the, uh, the correct diet and conditions, as you can see here, we have lots of little cute little babies. Look at those little things. Oh, they're so cute. No. And this happens in no time. So they breed very, very quickly. So the adults are quite fun to watch. You can see here some variation between the adults there. And you do get that a lot. And now, as you can see here, when they do eat the carrot, they tend to go for the core of the carrot first. So these little baby ones have taken refuge within that. They've created their own little nursery, if you like, within the carrot. All huddled together keeping each other company so, and this is a great way of actually finding native woodlice in your own back gardens if you put a slice of potato or some carrot out there turn it over the next morning you might find yourself some very own isopods from your own garden okay well i hope you enjoyed that look at the zebra isopod hope you agree with me that isopods are amazing little invertebrates and sometimes I think fairly underappreciated, but they have become more and more popular uh, over the past few years uh, within the invertebrate hobby and also the reptile hobby as well, not just for bioactive setups as cleanup crew, but also in their own right as little pets as well. They make fantastic, fascinating creatures uh, to keep. So most of my isopods that I keep, most of my species I keep separately in, uh, in their own tanks and tubs. Great fun to, to keep and watch and watch them growing. The colours on them are absolutely amazing. And, so again, if you did like this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. Please uh, pop some comments down below. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Every subscription means a lot to me. So, and with each one, I'm always amazed at people that actually uh, want to watch my videos. And so, again, another massive shout out and thank you to Trancher Dan for sharing the uh, the vinegaring video. That means a lot to me, dude. Cheers for that. So, and then, until then, uh, we'll see you in the next one. We'll We'll have another look at either an incredible invert or another animal. Bye bye.